YouTube chat integration. Control your stream on YouTube from OBS. Fancy stinger transitions that can use hardware accelerated decode. The mad lads have done it. OBS version 27.1 is in its release candidate form, which is the first testing phase or beta of the latest update to OBS Studio, which brings a few new features quite a laundry list of bug fixes and of course the big one being that YouTube integration that the YouTube devs themselves have helped with. We're going to be covering everything you need to know in this episode of Stream Guides. I'm Epos Vox, the stream professor. Hit the subscribe and notification button so you can stay informed about your stream. You know the spiel. Let's jump in. We're going to cover new features first and then some fixes that you should know about when it comes to OBS Studio as well in this update. Obviously the big huge one is that there's finally a YouTube integration. If you're unaware, Last year or the year before, they started adding integration support to be able to sign into your Twitch account or other account mixer at the time <laughs> to then automatically get docs in OBS for your stream chat, for controlling your stream, things like that. But YouTube was just never included and managing your YouTube chat in a custom browser doc in OBS Studio was always a hassle because you had to refresh it every stream sometimes it was just a whole mess and a whole ordeal and the youtube devs have pitched in helped the obs team develop a really awesome youtube integration which means you can connect to your account with no stream key copy pasting you can automatically schedule live streams update the title the description the privacy settings and more you get chat docs for public and unlisted streams unfortunately you cannot chat in these chat docs yet it's only read only but they're working on that and a couple other features it's pretty cool you just go to settings stream sign in with your account and then you will get the docs and the controls and this is really awesome for those who run youtube streams myself who runs my weekly youtube streaming show which there should be a streamer news tomorrow the day after uploading this by the way so go check that out i will be managing this from this update from now on because this will save me a ton of time and hassle i wanted to clarify a detail about the youtube workflow that may be a little bit confusing for some people so when you link your youtube account you are automatically given after you hit apply a chat doc which doesn't work until you start streaming of course which is fine but then there's no indication of what you're supposed to do and i'm currently advocating in the obs discord to change this and make it more intuitive accessible indicative of what you're supposed to what the workflow is but in order to actually schedule your streams or start streaming or whatever you actually hit the start streaming button there's no extra doc that brings up the stream scheduler you hit start streaming and this pulls up this whole dialogue to either make a new stream event in which case you can schedule it or do it immediately or select a previous event that you've already made over on youtube so this is pretty cool i do wish there was a better indication that this existed before you hit start streaming because typically you don't want to hit that until you're ready uh and there's no custom thumbnail support currently but I just wanted to provide the tutorial part here because I quickly ran into some confusion with this. Next up, they also updated the multi-view mode, which allows you to basically dedicate a monitor to seeing all of your different scenes at once, so you can easily choose between them, how a lot of broadcast mixers and the like works. You now get an 18-view mode for the multi-view, which is really cool and powerful. They've also updated the stinger transition feature to give you a mask-only mode. So, stinger transitions are a form of transition where a graphic comes onto the screen, typically fills the whole screen to hide the cut point of a transition, and then goes away. That was added quite a while ago, and then in a recent update, they added uh, stinger transitions with mask support which means you could have a stinger side by side with a black to white transition that kind of matches the stinger to then fade the sources between each other and have different cutouts and things like that instead of just being the graphic over top and a hard cut well now you can just have the mask support so this is basically luma matte transitions but you get to use your own custom ones and this is really powerful and the cool thing here is the wipe only or mask only mode for this transition does not require alpha which means if you're if you haven't seen my videos about media formats check those out uh, for stinger transitions and stuff typically stingers because they require transparency and alpha channel there's no format in obs that supports alpha transparency and hardware accelerated decoding which means your cpu is hit pretty hard whenever you're using stinger transitions which is a big point of lag and frame rate drops for a lot of people mask only stinger transitions while you don't get the graphic coming on stream you still get cool effects as the scenes transform into each other you don't need alpha for that because it's just black and white layers, which means you get hardware accelerated decoding, which means CPU performance is not impacted pretty much at all. And those of you on older, you know, like fourth gen i7s and stuff will have a much easier time here, which is freaking awesome. I, I have a couple demos that I've been showing on screen here. And previously, by the way, if you haven't checked it out, over on my Discord server, I regularly release free resources and things like that for streamers and content creators to make better content. I just a week ago released a whole big pack of like 
10 or so different Stinger and Track Mac transitions that are in the glitch or analog VHS style and was really happy with those. But they did require that alpha transparency. I'm going to so go check those out if you haven't seen them already, but I will be releasing some that are just the mask only mode, uh, which don't require alpha transparency and still get you some cool glitch effects. And I am super stoked for that. So head over to discord.gg slash eblesfox if you want to learn more about that. Next up, you can now control OBS more with a browser source. Previously, this was locked down so that browser sources could not control OBS for obvious security reasons, but now they have an opt-in with granular control tiers drop-down menu in the browser source to control what level a browser source have, has access to OBS Studio, which means browser sources can now start and stop streaming, change scenes, adjust sources, do all sorts of stuff, which will allow the world of additional plugins and stream bots and things like that to really manipulate OBS to get even more wild. And I am pretty stoked for that. And I'm glad that they have it disabled by default and then you choose the level of control that you want to give it. I'll probably have more videos coming soon on this because that's a really advanced topic and we got to wait for some tools to be developed for it, for it as well. Lastly, in the new features section, you can now draw safe areas over your stream, which means you can put, you know, bars that indicate where say the lower the little player preview in, in YouTube is going to be or things like that to make sure your graphics are in the right places most streamers probably aren't going to care about that but those who are trying to make sure everything is accessibility focused and you know able to be seen on all players and things like that will benefit from this this was something previously only available in multi-view and is now available in the normal mode this is all right let's talk about fixes because there's some important stuff here especially given some complaints that you all have had in my previous like OBS settings videos and things like that. First and foremost, Auto Remux now works with replay buffer clips. It was really annoying that it didn't before, does now. Media sources themselves got a fix so that they should use less CPU or require less CPU overhead sometimes, which is really nice to see because that's, uh, I think media sources, and I made a whole video about this at one point, but media sources are one of the like silent killers of your stream performance because they can do a lot of funky stuff to your frame times and things like that that you may not always notice. So anything that reduces the performance hit that they have is always a win. Next up are some changes to the missing files dialog box that they had just recently added. It now works for stinger transitions, which is great, because uh, especially because I keep accidentally moving my stinger transitions. There's now a menu option to actually pull up this dialog, because previously it just opened whenever you launched OBS. You can now go to the scene collection menu and pull up this dialog so you can manually hunt for files. And you can now disable that dialog from ever popping up with a startup flag, which I don't currently have yet, but I have asked in the OBS Discord, so hopefully someone will tell me. It is dash dash disable dash missing dash files dash check which I will have on screen. I literally just got the answer as I'm recording this. <laughs> now for a visibility and usability update, um, hidden or invisible sources in your sources list will now have dimmer text so you can more easily immediately know which sources are actually visible on stream and which are not, which is great. GIF sources, GIF image sources now animate in the preview mode when you're in studio mode. Previously they would just show one frame or not at all. Now they actually animate in studio mode, which is great. Drag and drop support is back on Linux, awesome. Game capture source has gotten some fixes so that it doesn't keep having to rehook as often, which should help performance and render frame times and things like that. And then lastly, a big one, which a lot of you complained about in my 7 OBS settings video that you need to know about, is the dynamic bitrate option, which allows the bitrate of your stream to automatically kind of adjust if suddenly your network gets congested and you can't stream the full bitrate you were streaming. This didn't really work on hardware encoders. Uh, you know, NVENC or QuickSync or what have you. This, for whatever reason, was broken and just would totally freak out. It is now fixed. So now if you're using NVENC or QuickSync or AMD's video encoder, you can now enable dynamic bitrate and it should be fine. Obviously, again, this whole thing is a release client. It is a release candidate. You all always want to correct me on that. It's a release candidate. It is effectively a beta. You're here to test it. It may not work fully yet, but by the time the full update comes out, it will. And I just wanted to let you all know about all the features because I am stoked. The YouTube integration is awesome and the transition possibilities here. I was actually pretty frustrated that I couldn't use custom Luma transitions before. This is great. So download links will be in the description below as always, as will be the link to our merch. If you want some really awesome desk mats or pins or stickers in our classic stream professor VHS style, I highly recommend you go to eposfox.gg slash merch. You also get a free trial to Nebula, my own video streaming service where you get early access to videos, they're ad free, higher quality, and all of that. Hit the like button, subscribe, and join us on Discord, discord.gg slash Remember, be kind, rewind.